You've won the toss, you can take the football or a goal. You want to receive? Which goal do you want to defend? South goal. South goal, you're down there. All right, turn around. Referee Dean Calhoun with a flip of the coin and the team captains, Ron Simpkins and John Arbesnik for Michigan, Michigan State, John Dan Bass and Mark Bramer. Frank Strocher, the umpire, Bob Walker, the head linesman, Dale Orem, the line judge, Otto Poles, the field judge, and Mike Nevin is the back judge. And at halftime, we'll be going back to Washington, rejoining our news team, edited by Frank Reynolds, to recap and hear highlights of the Pope's speech today at the White House. Big Ten, he's got 93 passes on his career, he's got nine so far this year. He's talking right now to the two Michigan co-captains, Simpkins and Arbesnik. In a matter of seconds now, the Wolverines kickoff team, which means that down below us here on this western sideline, it will be Diggs, and then he will be flanked by Thompson, number 99, then Owens, number 53, Tony Leone, 34, and Ali Haji Sheik will kick off, number 6, Jolly is the safety man, number 16, Girgash, 50, then Needham, number 83, Brayman, number 28, Harden, number 4, and Bostic, number 13. Those 11 men are right now looking at one Mr. Ali as he's talking to his 10-man crew. The referee is asking Ali where he wants the ball, and Ali will instruct him in just a matter of seconds now whether he wants the ball at this hash line or the other hash line. We see that he is going to kick from the far hash line, so we will reverse what we mentioned a moment ago. No, he's kicking from this west side line. It'll be just as we said. Diggs below us here. Thompson, Owens, Leone, Virgil, Ali, Jolly, Girgash, Needham, Brayman, Harden, and Bostic. The two men back for Michigan State, number 20, Reeves, or check, number 20 is Smith, number 42 is Hughes. Those two men who have brought back kickoffs for Michigan State, Hughes, number 42, has brought back six, averaging 38 yards of return. And number 42, Hughes, has brought back one kickoff. So this is a new slant for Mr. Hughes. Usually in the previous four games at Michigan State is 3-1. and one. They're 1-0 one and oh in the Big Ten. Ali is all set for Gene Calhoun, the referee. And we will have the 1972 Michigan, Michigan State kickoff goes into the record book. Ali kicks and overran deep down into the end zone. It'll be an automatic touchback. Good old Ali, non-returnable that time. Smith touched it down, automatic touchback. So check in Burt Vaughn, number 15. The sophomore, 6-4. He's thrown the ball 94 times, completed 43 for 581 yards. That's passing at the rate of 80, 45 percent. He's had four touchdowns. He's been intercepted four times. His longest completed pass, 41 yards. He's carried the ball for a net minus 21 yards. Those are the statistics of one Mr. Burt Vaughn. He sets his team. Wide to the left is Howard. Wide to the right down here is Burt. It's the I-formation Smith deep and Middleton close. Is Bert Vaughn under center, first and ten on the Michigan State 20-yard line. There's a handoff this time to Smith. He's hit right there at the 21, and he's piled up. Smith coming into the ball game and like the pigskin for the Spartans. 70 times for 411 yards. That's an average of six yards per carry. He scored two touchdowns. And now we have Hughes coming in, number 42, and Schramm, number 45. Those men will alternate. Hughes has carried the ball 46 times for an average of four yards a carry. Schramm, the fullback, eight times for an average of three and a half. Wide to the right this time, we see it's number 84, that's Bird. Wide to the left is Howard. Bird Vaughn sets his team. It's second and nine at his own 21-yard line. The first series of downs following the opening kickoff. There's a handoff this time to Hughes. Hughes is to the 25, and he gets about four yards on the play. The first third down situation of the ball game, and it belongs to the green and white. They have a third and five. Michigan's front five right now. Needham, Greer, Kites, Godfrey, and Owen. Godfrey making his 13th tackle of 1979, the first of this game. Michigan using a defense here this afternoon. The key today is STR. Stop that run. They figure if they can stop the Michigan State running attack, they will win. They being Michigan, Michigan State has it. Third and five on their own 25. The split backs are Smith and Shreya. Wide to the left is Howard. Wide to the right is Bird. There is... There is Vaughn back, a swing pass out here to Hughes at the 20. He's up to 25. First down, 31-yard line, Andy Schramm, who had caught three passes coming into the ball game. A screen pass out in the right flat, beautifully thrown, equally well caught by Mr. Schramm. His fourth reception of the year, his first of the afternoon. Michigan State draws first one, the first and ten at the 31-yard line. Mr. Schramm is the man who caught that swing pass. 
the fullback, you can't call him second string. They alternate all the time. Middleton is in now. Hughes is the tailback. Wide to the left is Bird. Wide to the right is Howard. Bird Vaughn sets his team. First and 10 on his own 31-yard line, 18 yards in from this to Western sideline. Hughes deep, Middleton close. Hughes takes, follows Middleton up over the 31, 32, and that's where he's piled up in there by Needham, Greer, Kites, and Godfrey. Michigan's front five right now. Needham, Greer, Kites, Turkovac broke his hand in California. That means Kites, the right tackle defensively, moves in to take over the middle guard for the injured Turkovac. And so, subbing for Kites at left tackle is Godfrey. And then Owens is at the defensive end. The two linebackers, Simpkins and Canavino. Harris at the strong safety. Harden at free safety with Brayman and Jolly at the halfback. They're looking over the quarterback now, Bert Vaughn. It brings up second and eight on the 34-yard line. The tailback is Smith, the fullback. Delayed handoff to Smith. He's being chased by Canavino. And he's going to run. He's up over the 35. He gets to the 37-yard line, picking up about three yards on the play. Burt Vaughn is coming into the game. Had a net running yardage of minus 21 in nine carries. Carries for the first time this afternoon. That was a pass play all the way, but he couldn't find a man open. They were all covered. It brings up another third down. The last time State had third and five on their own 25, they picked up the first first down of the ball game. They now have a third and five again on their own 37-yard line, 18 yards in from the far eastern sideline. No score from East Lansing. The Donny Brook between the green and white and the maize and blue. Wide to the right this time is Bird. Wide to the left is Howard. Hughes deep, Schramm close. Bird Vaughn, the quarterback, under center. He looks over the Michigan front five. He's back for a pass. He has plenty of time. He throws downfield, and it's dropped. Incomplete, Schramm, the same passing combination that picked up a first down a few moments ago. Failed that time. Schramm couldn't hold the pass. Well thrown. Schramm was open. It goes as an incompleted forward pass. And now the leading punter in the Big Ten right now. He's punted 21 times against Illinois, Oregon, Miami of Ohio, and Notre Dame, and he's averaged 44 and a half yards a kick. He's standing on his own 22. The point of scrimmage is a Michigan State 37. Anthony Carter is deep. This lad will kick it. Look at that ball. Carter, you're going to take it on the 9. Carter at the 10. Carter at the 15. He dances away at the 20. He hits his own man and the state man at the 24-yard line. Check in the Wolverines on offense. For those of you who may have just tuned in, Michigan State won the toss of the coin. The Michigan kicked off. It was out of the end zone. Four. They line up in the I formation. Edwards deep, Reed close. Dickey takes the center. Hands off to Edwards, and Edwards dropped for a body yard game. The same thing State did the first time they had the ball. They picked up a yard through tackle, and that's exactly what Edwards did. Edwards coming into the game with 70 carries, averaging five yards a carry, 344 yards. B.J. Dickey under center now. It's second and nine. He sets his team. Clayton wide to the right. Carter wide to the left. Edwards deep, Reed close. Dickey under center. He rolls out to the right, and Dickey's going to keep the ball. He slips at the 27. He picks up about two yards from the 25 to the 27-yard line. And so Michigan on third and seven now. It's Savage, Larry Savage, coming in and making his first tackle of the afternoon, the 17th of his season of 1979. Michigan State's defense right here is operating out of that 70 front, 5-4-2. Their, their theory is that they play a very balanced defense. Their tackles will either cover to the inside, giving a fast flow to their linebackers, or they cover to the outside and the linebackers stay at home. Well, Dickey sets himself. First time he's had third. This time third and seven. There is a fake drop play. There's a pass down there. It's way over the head of Marsh. Doug Marsh, the intended receiver, the leading receiver on the Michigan team was 14. And so Michigan, Hunter, Brian, Ozzie, Virgil, who's averaged 36 yards a kick on 18 punts so far in this 1979 season against Northwestern, Notre Dame, Kansas, and Cal, is standing back on his own 13-yard line. The ball rests 18 yards in from the eastern sideline. No score from East Lansing. Michigan State's had the ball. They picked up a first down. Michigan's had the ball. They have failed to pick up a first down. Two men deeper, Smith and Hughes, the same two men who were back on the kickoff. And Mr. Virgil is standing back on his own 13. There it is, an end over end, not too deep. It's taken on the run at the 45, and he's hit Hughes at the 48-yard line. First and 10 as Michigan State on the exchange of punch picks up 12 yards. A 31-yard kick with a 5-yard return. And so, Michigan State on the exchange of punch. Remember, they punted from their 37. They now have it on the, their own 47. So, Michigan's front five, Needham, Greer, Kites, Godfrey, and Owen. The backfield, Smith and Middleton. Smith deep, Middleton close. Bird Vaughn under center. Wide to the right this time is Bird. Wide to the left is Howard. 
Bert Vaughn looks at a 5-2. Michigan's flexing the one tackle. There's Greer coming in. And Bert Vaughn's into the open. Smith down to the 40. The 38-yard line. Steve Smith taking the handoff. Getting a nice box in there from Strada and Wiska. Opening up a fine hole between the Michigan defensive left end and the defensive tackle as Greer came in hard. And he was blocked as they came around him. And it was Steve Smith who's averaged six yards to carry, picks up Michigan State second first down to the ball game. Wide to the left is Bird. Wide to the right is Howard. It's Hughes deep and Schramm close under center is Bert Vaughn at quarterback. Michigan State on the Michigan 38-yard line. Bert Vaughn looks at a 5-2-4. Then he has to the fullback. He gets three yards to the 35-yard line. Andy Schramm from Finley, Ohio, averaging three and a half yards to carry coming into the ball game. He caught the pass that gave Michigan State their first first down of this ball game right after the opening kickoff and now since then they've punted to Michigan Michigan failed to pick up a first down the Spartans brought the punt back on the return to the 48 on the first play Smith moved it to the Michigan 38 where they now have it second down and seven on the Michigan 35 yard line Smith deep Middleton close the I formation Bird is back gives a drop play to Smith he's into the open he's down to 25 down to the 22 yard line Steve Smith electrifying this partisan crowd with two brilliant open field runs the first one from his own 47 to the Michigan 38, and this one from the Michigan 35 to the Wolverine 23 yard line, and the Spartans are rolling. And the Michigan defense of STR Lundo stop that run. They've got to do it. Certainly do, Bob. Uh, they've run well. Smith has shown uh, great ability. They blocked our defense. Has to get moving. Okay. Reeves deep, Shram close. First and 10 on the 22 yard line, Burt. Vaughn looks over a five-man front. It's actually a 4-3 now. A tight 4-3. And then he pitches off this time to the tailback, and the tailback breaks, but he's hit right there at the 20. The tailback is Bruce Reeves. Alternating tailbacks here. Reeves running, then Hughes, number 42, Reeves, number 30, and 20, number Smith. They're alternating after every other play. So right now we see Reeves is staying in. No, Reeves has come out. Here comes Smith and Middleton into the ball game. They'll be the tandem of the eye. Michigan State has a second down and eight on the Michigan 20-yard line. Remember, they have the best field goal kicker, who is seven out of ten, and he's booted two over 52 yards. First Vaughn sets his team. Smith deep, Middleton close. The eye formation. Vaughn's back for a pass. He's being chased. He eats it on the 34-yard line. It's Ron Simpkins, the big All-American candidate, number 40, the co-captain, making his second sack of 1979. And it is actually his second tackle, and he only needs three more to become the most prolific tackler in the history of Michigan football. He now has 397 tackles. He needs three more to reach that magic number of 400 tackles in a Michigan uniform. Well, that was couldn't have come at a more opportune time. It brings up third and 20 now. Third and 20, the I formation, Hughes deep, Shram close. The point of scrimmage is a Michigan 32-yard line. Bert Vaughn pitches deep this time off to Hughes. He's hit and dropped right there at the 34-yard line, losing another two and a half yards on the play. And right now, if they go for a field goal, they being Michigan State, it will be that fine Morton Anderson, who was seven out of ten. Actually, he's a well, sidewinder. He's a soccer style, number eight. No, sir, they're not going for it because Michigan would have good field position. Stackowitz is back in punt formation. The center over the ball is Foster. Stackowitz, who's averaged 44 and a half yards a kick, is going to call timeout because Michigan State isn't quite sure. As Darrell Rogers now in his fourth year at Michigan State, so Stackowitz now the leading punter in the Big Ten. You know, he's a lot like Skladani used to be at Ohio State. He punts so long and so far. He outkicks his coverage. Well, he's punting from the Michigan 49. He's angling for the corner, and he may get it. He does get it. A beautiful kick to the Coffin corner at the southeast corner on the three-and-a-half-yard line. A 31-yard kick. I'll tell you this, Roy Stackowitz is some kind of a guy. Oh, number 19, Ray Stackowitz. Well, Michigan has their backs to the wall right now. As the Wolverines, this is the second possession for Michigan. The first time they had it, they picked up exactly four yards. And on fourth down and six, Mr. Virgil got a 31-yard kick. And now Michigan is in deep trouble in that up over the ball comes Lilja. The line follows. It's Mitchell, Paris, Becker, Lilja, Besnick, Baranski, and Marsh. Edwards deep, Reed close. The I formation. Two tight ends this time. 
And B.J. Dickey is asking the crowd to settle down. Only one flanker out this time, and that man happens to be Ralph Clayton from Redford High, the senior, who on this season has caught six passes on his career, 57 passes. But there's a timeout down in the playing field here as B.J. Dickey has asked the referee to please have the crowd quiet down. Well, we'll see whether the crowd responds favorably. They will realize the new rule in football that they could be penalized, so they're keeping quiet. And it's Edwards Deep, Reed close. There's a handoff to Reed. He's up over the five, and he's hit right there at the six-yard line. He picked up about two and a half yards on the play. Larry Reed through the right side. Becker and Lilja trying to open up a hole for their fullback, the senior from Philadelphia, 213 pounds, number 23. Michigan not being able to do much here deep in their own territory. But Michigan State is fired up. It's a home game. They're coming off a dismal loss to Notre Dame a week ago when they were turned every way but loose, 27 to 3. Michigan, meanwhile, scraped one by California, 14 to 10. B.J. Dickey sets his team now. He has a second and eight. There is the handoff this time to the tailback, and he's hit right in there. Edwards is hit at the uh, about the nine-yard line. It brings up about third down, and I'd say four and a half. The ball resting 18 yards in from the eastern sideline. For those fans who have been here, it's away from the open end of the field in that the open tunnel end at the northern end. Michigan is back against the southern goal. They have a third down, and this is the second third down situation as B.J. Dickey failed to convert the first one. Wide to the left is Clayton. Two tight ends, a balanced line. Edwards deep, Reed close. There's B.J. going out to the right, and he pitches off to Edwards down the 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, and he's up, got about beautiful running there by Sam Edwards, and he can move the 40 in about four or five, and he looks like he might do it right there as he pulled away, and Lendo, did you pick up a block in there? Well, I didn't pick up the block, Bob, but what I did pick up was Dickey ran that option exceptionally well and went to the last minute, drew the men to him, flipped the ball to Edwards, and it was just a great option run on the part of Dickey. It sure was. Old Dickey, he loves to run, but he knew that time he sucked them in. They knew he liked to run, and they pulled in on Dickey, and he pitched off. Fine observation, Lindo. Wide to the right goes Mitchell, along with Clayton. It's Edwards deep and Reed close. B.J. Dickey with plenty of running room. First and 10 from his own 34-yard line. He heads off to the fullback, Reed, and he's up through the right side behind Becker and Lilja for about four and a half yards to the 39. So now the ball rests midway between the sideline stripes. No score from East Lansing. Michigan kicked off deep in the end zone. Michigan State didn't return it. State took off on their own 20, picked up a first down. Then they had to punt. Michigan failed to pick up a first down. They punted to State. State moved down to the Michigan 35-yard line. And then Stackowitz punted out of bounds on the three-and-a-half-yard line. Michigan on third and five. From inside the 10-yard line, moved out on a beautiful pitch out. Dickey to Edwards, down to the 34. They now have it second down and five. It's Edwards deep and Reed close. There's a hand up to Edwards. He hits nothing but green and white jerseys at the 42-yard line. It's McCormick, John McCormick, making his second tackle of the afternoon, the 21st of the 1979 season. State piling up in there. State using, as we said before, their defensive front five. Five, four, two are Savage, Webb, Hay, Mitten, and McCormick, the two linebackers, Otis and Bass. Milheiser is a strong safety. Anderson, the free safety, with Williams and Burroughs at the wingbacks, the cornerbacks. State only flip-flops two men, the safety men and the linebackers. They have a middle linebacker and outside linebacker. Dan Bass looks over. B.J. Dickey, who has his team now, third and two. Two tight ends in a balanced line. Reed close. Edwards deep. There is B.J. going out to the right. He's going to keep it. He has the first down. He, he has the first down to the 45-yard line. Remember, the series started. Edwards knocked out of bounds at the 34 and a half. The crowd thought they knocked Edwards back, but the official said, no, sir, it's at the 45. That will be a first down, and we're going to pause 15 seconds for station identification. Over this, the Michigan 0, Michigan State 0 football network. B.J. Dickey, first and 10 on his own 45. He fakes the read. He's back. He caught his arm. He throws the bomb to Carter. And it's too far. Nobody can catch it. Two men covering Carter. It was Anderson and Burroughs covering Carter down the center of the field. It was a foot race down there. And Carter outran the two defensive men and had the ball been about two yards shorter, Carter might have had it. He has great hands. Bo told me this week, he said, you know, Bob, I've coached a lot of football. I've never had a youngster with hands like Carter. He just seems to sense where the ball and you could see that he knew where it was. He just, it was just overthrown, but he had his hands out there ready to catch it. Okay, second and five. The ball resting 18 yards in from the eastern sideline. It's second down and 10 on the 45. 
There is B.J. rolling out to the right. He pitches off to Edwards down the 45, over the 50, down the 45. It's another first down at the 42-yard line. Edwards coming around the left side of that offensive line to pulling guard. Besnick throwing a block. Reed moved in there and threw a block on the linebacker. And Edwards has their, or check, Michigan has their third first down of the ball game. Michigan State has three. Michigan has three. This is the furthest penetration by the Wolverines. They have moved the ball from their own three-and-a-half-yard line on that fine coffin corner punt by Stakowicz all the way down to the Spartan 42-yard line. Wide to the right is Carter. Wide to the left this time is Clayton. It's the I formation. Edwards deep and Reed close. B.J. Dickey under center looks at a 5-4-2. Then B.J. hands off to Reed and he hits. He fumbles the ball and he recovers. Oh, that hand reached out. And for a moment, that elusive pigskin was going to be grappled up by the green and white. But no sir, sir, Larry Reed. That Philadelphia senior just cuddled it back in and got in that fetal position. And there's nobody going to take that ball away from Mr. Reed on that fumble. So the ball rests about 19 yards in from this, the western sideline. Second down and 11. This is a key situation. Michigan has moved the ball well on this drive. All the way from their own three-and-a-half-yard line. Wide to the right is Mitchell. Wide to the left is Clayton. It's Edwards deep and Reed close. And B.J. Dickey looking at a five-man front. Pitches off this time to Edwards. He fakes the throw back. Edwards the hurdles one man. Down the 40. Down the 35. Down the 30. And there's a flag on the play. And that looks like usually a face mask against somebody down there. Jimmy Yanichek, the spotter for State here, said it was a face mask. Usually when there's a play like that, it's a clipping penalty. But Jim, he's a very astute. Yes, sir, that's a face mask from the 33. That'll move it down to the 18. Call it the 34. It'll move it down inside the 20. Remember, State's furthest penetration earlier in this quarter was to the Michigan 20, where Big Ron Simpkins roared up and dropped Burt Vaughn back on the Spartan 34-yard line on the play following the fact that Michigan State got to the 20. And now Michigan has the ball. They moved it all the way down to the 19-yard line. And check out Michigan's front seven. Mitchell, Paris, Becker, Lilja center, Arbesnik, Baranski, and Marsh. B.J. Dickey at quarterback. What a drive this has been with the help of that penalty. It's Wolfhawk in now at tailback. Wolfhawk deep, Reed close. Wolfhawk averaging four and a half yards a carry against four opponents. Two tight ends and a balanced line. B.J. Dickey looks at a five-man front of Michigan State. And he hands off to Wolfhawk. He gets a block. He cuts it to 15. Down to the 10. Down to the nine-yard line. As Wolfhawk lining up back on about the 17, cut over the 15, cut it to 12, over the 10, drops at the nine yard line by Danny Bass along with Mark Anderson. He made on the play about four yards. It'll bring up second down and six. Second down and six, the ball resting, 18 yards in from the far eastern sideline. Mr. Wolfhawk has had two touchdowns so far this year. He had one against Northwestern, two against Northwestern, and right now two wide outs. Clayton at the slot, Carter wide out. Wolfhawk deep. Wolfhawk takes. He's hit the 5-4-3. And he's hit right there at the three-yard line. And Butch Wolfhawk rounding in there like a bull with a bee in his ear. Picking up blocks up front from our Besnick, Lilja, and Reed up there isolating on that linebacker. Opening up a hole for his tailback, Wolfhawk. And Wolfhawk now and the Michigan team are threatening. There's no score from East Lansing. A minute and 55 seconds remaining in the first quarter. It'll be third down and two. Two yards away from a first down. Four yards away from the first score in the ball game. Up over the ball comes Loja. The line follows two tight ends in a balanced line. Wide to the left is Clayton. It's Wolf off deep and Reed close. It's B.J. Dickey under center at the four-yard line. B.J. rolling out. He cuts in and he's hit right there at the two. He may have picked up the first down. He needed two for the first down, four for the touchdown. And now the referee, Mr. Calhoun, is digging into the pile. And Michigan, no, an official timeout to see whether or not B.J. Dickey on third and two picked up a first down. He did his first and goal at the Michigan State two-yard line as the Wolverines have moved down from 95 yards from their own three-yard line to the Michigan State two-yard line. And the maize and blue daubers are high here in East Lansing right now as Michigan remembers last year's 25 to 16 score. Up over the ball comes Lilja. The line follows. Mitchell wide out to the left. Two tight ends in a balanced line. Wolf deep and Reed close. B.J. Dickey under center. 
On a long count from center, B.J. Dickey takes the ball. He rolls out to the right. He pitches off to Wolfock, and he's going to be hit. No, sir! Wolfock scores! Mitch Wolfock scores a first touchdown in the 1979 Michigan Michigan State Classic. It is Butch Wolfock's third touchdown of 1979. The fifth on his career. He had two last year in 1978. He had two coming into the game here today, and he just climaxed a 96 and a half yard drive by Michigan. Michigan in 14 plays, and Michigan is 14 out of 14 on extra points. It will be Virgil, number two, who right now on extra points is 10 out of 10. Kneeling is Tony Jackson. If you hear the Bow Schumbeckler scoring horn in the background, it'll mean that Michigan has a seven-point lead. It's snapped by Lilja. It's spotted by Jackson. It's kicked by Virgil. And it is Michigan 7, Michigan State zip with a minute and three seconds remaining on the green and white scoreboard. Certainly does, Bob. And another key guy along with uh, Simpkins was uh, Godfrey, number 90. He did a great job in that rush also. Okay, here he goes. Ali approaches. His last one was out of the end zone. This one may be out of bounds. No, sir, deep in again, non-returnable. Smith catches it again. Ali has had two times where he's kicked, and both times they have been non-returnables. You can't do much better than that. Michigan's 96-yard drive. Edwards, five carries for 62. Reed, three carries for six. Dickey, three carries for five. Wolfock, three carries for 11 in the last two yards into the end zone. Another great option play by B.J. Dickey. Off to Wolfock at the last minute, and Wolfock just ran through two would-be Spartan tacklers. So Michigan leads seven to zip. Up over the ball now comes Foster. Bird Vaughn, the quarterback under center. Smith deep and Middleton close. Wide to the left is Howard. Wide to the right is Bird. Bird Vaughn under center, and he fakes the handoff, and the drives back on the 12-yard line, throws the pass, is complete to the 34-yard line. Gene Bird. Gene Bird. Wait a minute. They're claiming that he dropped the ball. He was out of bounds. John. Bob, in that particular play, he had caught the ball, but it bounced out of his hands, and the next time he had possession, he was out of bounds. So it was a no-catch, a good call by the official. It sure was. I really couldn't see that, Don. The, the Spartans are up around it on that sidelines, and I saw him catch it and then go out of bounds. I didn't see the juggle. Nice pickup, Lendo. Okay, up over the ball comes Foster. It's still 10 yards, second and 10, 58 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Wide to the right is Bird. Wide to the left is Howard. Hughes deep, Shram close. There's a fake to Hughes. Back on the 10. He throws downfield. Out of bounds. Incomplete. Gene Bird, the intended receiver. Bird is the number one receiver so far this year, having caught 10. Canavino and Greer both in there putting pressure on the quarterback, Bird Vaughn. Michigan's front five right now. Needham, Greer, Kites, Godfrey, and Owens. The linebackers, Canavino and Simpkins. Brayman along with Jolly at the cornerbacks with Harden at safety. Up over the ball comes Matt Foster. The line follows. Wide to the left is Howard. Wide to the right is Bird. Smith deep. Middleton close. They're changing almost on every play. Bird Vaughn under center at quarterback. Looks at Michigan's flex defense. There's a pitch off to the tailback. That time he meets Michigan man. He shakes one at the 20. Knocked out of bounds at the 23-yard line. He being Steve Smith, who earlier in this quarter broke two fine runs for first downs and took the ball from his own 47 to the Michigan 38. And now Michigan's defense, McCartney's Monsters, showing the prowess that has given them supremacy in defensive football over the 11 years under Bo Schembechler in the Big Ten. They've led the Big Ten in defense against the score eight out of ten years. Standing back again, of course, is Ray Stackowitz, who's averaged 44 and a half yards a kick. Carter all alone back here. Jolly up there to do the blocking for Carter. From the 12-yard line, there it is. A beautiful long kick. Carter at the 30. Carter at the 35. He breaks at the 40. He twists away at the 45. He's still on his feet at the 47. A beautiful return by Anthony Carter. A 46-yard kick with a 16-yard return. Very reminiscent of the game down at Ohio State in 76 when... Claudani punted an average of 52 yards a kick, and Jimmy Smith of Michigan just averaged an 18-yard return, which nullified the long punt because the punt just outkicked the coverage. And that's what Stakowicz is doing here because Carter, when you give him that kind of running room, boy, he can move. I tell you, he is the fastest thing. He's like a bunny with his tail on fire down there. Okay, two wide outs to the left. At the tailback now is Edwards. Reed at fullback, there's a pitch off to Edwards up to 45, he cuts into the midfield stripe and he's dropped right there at the 50 yard Okay, they're bringing the ball in at the 50 yard line.
It brings up second down and six. 13 seconds remaining. In the first quarter, Michigan leads in the ball game, having moved 96 yards in the closing minutes of this first quarter. Two wideouts to the left, Clayton along with Carter. It's Edwards deep and Reed close. There is B.J. handing off to Reed, and boy, he gets nothing but green and white at the 48-yard line, and I believe that's it. That's all there is. There isn't any more of the first quarter. Michigan 7, Michigan State zip, 404 for Michigan on the Michigan State 48-yard line. Edward Stephen Reed close. There is B.J. Dickey, and he fakes the handoff. He's rolling out to the right, and he's going to run with the ball, and he's down, and he hits at the 45. He does not pick up a first down. B.J. Dickey couldn't find anybody open. And he hit nothing but green and white at the 45. So it brings up a fourth down. And Michigan will now give up the pigskin. And Virgil has an excellent position to kick from. With fourth down and two, leading seven to nothing. There's no way old General Bowe's going to gamble in the middle of the field early in the ball game with a seven to nothing lead. 14 minutes remaining in the first half. Virgil on his first punt here this afternoon boomed it out but 31 yards below his average coming into the game at 36 yards a kick. He's standing, Brian Virgil standing on the 41, 18 yards in from this sideline. The point of scrimmage is the Spartan 45. Lil just snaps it. There is the kick. It's off the side of his foot, and it goes out of bounds somewhere around the 23-yard line. So a, he shanked it, trying to hit the corner. He shanked it, and it'll be somewhat good field position, a 21-yard kick as Michigan's kicking game still leaves quite a bit to be desired. But the thing that leaves nothing to be desired is the fact that the scoreboard right now is Michigan 7, Michigan State zip. The furthest penetration by the Spartans, the Wolverine 20, and then on the following play, Simpkins sacked Vaughn for a 14-yard loss. And that was the story of the first quarter. Wide to the right is Bird, wide to the left is Howard. Is Smith deep? Schramm close, Bird Vaughn under center, first and 10 from their own 24-yard line. He gives to the fullback, Schramm, and he hits nothing but Mays and Blue at the 26, but he broke three tackles and dropped in there at the 30-yard line. Godfrey finally making the tackle. Godfrey's third tackle of the afternoon, the 15th of this 79 season for that Florida senior, Chris Godfrey, number 90. Michigan State has the ball now on their own. Call it just shy of the 30-yard line, 19 yards in from this, the western sideline. Second down and four. It's Hughes deep and Middleton close. Bird Vaughn looks over a 5-2-4 defense. The umbrella now shifts a bit as Vaughn pitches off to the tailback Hughes. He gets a hole and he breaks it at the 30, the 32, the 34-yard line. He does pick up enough yardage. Remember, the punt went out of bounds at the Spartan 24. Hughes is dropped at the 34 and a half. That will be a Michigan State first down. So Michigan State has four first downs. They draw first blood in the second quarter and first down, as they did in the first quarter. When they took the ball on the opening kickoff, they touched it down for a touchback, and then from the 20-yard line on third and five from the 25, a screen pass out to Schramm, picked up a first down, and then Michigan State, of course, was forced to punt, and it went back and forth. Michigan finally moving 96 yards for the only score in the game. So Bird Vaughn sets his team first and ten on his own 35-yard line. He has Smith deep, Shram close, Shram takes his hit at the 40 and drops right there. A five-yard gain. And the Michigan defense, who coming into the ball game, had only allowed an average on the ground of 61 yards to Michigan's four opponents, Northwestern, Notre Dame, Kansas, and California. California was net minus four yards rushing a week ago, but Michigan State has picked up all of their yardage here in this ballgame so far on the ground and on the running legs of Reeves and Hughes and Smith with Middleton and Schramm at fullback. It's Middleton close, Reeves deep this time. The quarterback is Bird Vaughn at second and five on his own 40. He hands off to Reeves. Oh, a beautiful sack back at the 38-yard line. Reeves was upended by Dale Kites, moving in there, making his third sack of the season. The 16th sack of his career. That senior from Columbus, Ohio, playing the middle guard right now because Turgovac, the Youngstown, Ohio sophomore, was hurt last week, broke his hand. And so they moved Kites over and moved Godfrey in. The front five, Owens, Godfrey, Kites at the nose guard, Greer and Needham. The linebackers, Canavino and Simpkins, Stu Harris, and Harden at the safeties. Looking that over is Bert Vaughn, third and seven. Bird Vaughn, third and seven on his own 38-yard line. He has Smith deep, Shram close. There's a hand up to Smith, and he picks up seven. He's down over the midfield side. He's down to the 45. He breaks at the 42, and it's dropped right there at the 42-yard line. I tell you, this Steve Smith. And we heard last night at the press conference, one of the coaches was there for Michigan State, and they said, Bob, if this kid can put it all together, 
right now he's only a junior but if he can put it all together he could be a Heisman Award candidate and I can see why boy he moved through there darn I never saw a kid move any quicker Bob they've got two fine tailbacks I watched the uh, replay of the uh, ball game last week and certainly they show some potential to run that football they're dangerous all right, Smith is out resting. Hughes is in. Middleton close. The I formation. Wide to the left this time is Bird. Wide to the right is Howard. Bird Vaughn on the Michigan 42-yard line. Michigan leads seven to zip. Vaughn pitches off this time to Hughes around the left side. He's hit and he's dropped for a loss at the 45-yard line by Mike Jolly. His first sack of the 1979 season. The Melvindale, Michigan senior, 6-4. Old Butterknife, his teammates call him. He moved in there real well. Tall, lanky youngster. They call him Bones. Some of the teammates, some of them butter knife because he's like a butter knife. He just slips in between those would-be blockers. He has a nose for the ball, and that time he sure did. He threw the ball carrier for a loss. It'll be second and 13 at the 45-yard line, 18 yards in from this to the western sideline. Bird wide to the right. Howard wide to the left. Smith deep. Shram close. There's a fake to Smith. A long bomb way downfield, way over the head of everyone. The intended receiver, number four, that's Howard. Sam Howard, who had caught four or five coming into the ball game, was covered over there by Mike Harden, the senior safety man, the champion, as Bo told us in the locker room before the game against California on defense. He forced a fumble, recovered two fumbles, made seven tackles, played a win of a game against the Bears a week ago on the coast. Up over the ball now, third and 13, and he has converted two out of six, he being Burt Vaughn. Vaughn sets his team wide to the right is Bird. He has Hughes deep, Middleton close. And Williams is in a tight end. There is the handoff this time to Hughes. Hughes breaks the tackle, and he's dropped at the 42-yard line. Picking up on the play. Had he broken that last tackle, Lundo, he'd have been long gone. Certainly was. They seem to, uh, I guess we're anticipating in certain situations, Bob, anticipating the pass. And so they've run the draw play and have done an effective job on sucking us in, then trapping and going on the draw. It's been well executed. Good blocking up front there. I noticed Rod Strada and Matt Foster, the center, after he snaps the ball, opening up a hole for the tailback. So now it'll be Ray Stakowitz. He's punted so far twice, 54 and 30 yards. He got the coffin corner. The point of scrimmage is the Michigan 42. Stakowitz is standing midway between the sideline stripes on the Michigan 45 and a half yard line. There's a snap. There's the punt. Right-footed kick angling for the northwest corner is taken by Harden on the fair catch at the 11-yard line. Well. In the latter five minutes of that first period, Michigan had to move from their own three-and-a-half yard line. Now, is in there at fullback now. Deep as Edwards at the I formation. Wide to the left this time is two tight ends, and there is the fullback Smith, and he's hit right there at the 14-yard line. Rosie Smith picking up about three-and-a-half yards, a yard short of his average coming into this ball game. Rosie Smith, not a big lad. He played tailback a year ago, you remember, and his sophomore year. He's great on the swing passes out in the right or left flat. It comes a change for Michigan, of course. Mitchell coming in, Reed coming in for Smith. Mitchell coming in at the end, replacing Beth. So it'll be Edwards deep and Reed close. The I formation, second and seven on their own 14-yard line. B.J. Dickey, two wide outs to the left, Clayton and Mitchell. B.J. pitches off to Edwards. He gets a block. He's over the 15 and is tripped at the 18-yard line. Edwards trying to pick up a block from Becker, Kurt Becker, the Aurora, Illinois junior. And it was... Savage coming in, making his third tackle of the afternoon, the 29th on his 79 career. The very fine senior defensive end. Actually, State's offensive 11 this afternoon has seven seniors, three juniors, and a sophomore when they're on offense. When Michigan's on offense, the Wolverines right now have six seniors, four juniors, and a sophomore. And okay, it's third and three. The tailback is Edwards. Tony Carter is in wide to the left. And Clayton wide to the right. There is a fake handoff. There's a pass over the center, and it's good for a first down to the tailback, Edwards, and Edwards has dropped at the 30-25-yard line. They have not thrown a pass to Edwards in this ballgame so far. He's caught nine so far this year on the swing pass variety out in the right flat or left flat. That time, Edwards went through on the fake up the center on the draw and then got down about eight yards right over the center and then turned around and V.J. just dropped back and centered the ball right into his numbers there at the 25-yard line. First and 10 for the Maize and Blue as they move out over the 20. Edwards deep, Reed close. There is the handoff this time, and he almost fumbles the ball at the 22-yard line. The man who fumbled it in there, or almost fumbled, Larry Reed, the fullback, couldn't quite get the handoff from B.J. Dickey. Eight minutes and 12 seconds remaining in the first quarter in a tremendous football game here in East Lansing. Michigan's 
front seven right now, averaging 239 pounds a man. Michigan State's defensive front five going at 229. So Michigan has a 10-pound advantage per man up there in the trench right now offensively. On defense, the Wolverines have a 9-pound per man advantage. So the Wolverines now set themselves second and eight on their own 28-yard line. It was deep read close. There it is, Edwards cutting into the right, and he can't pick up anything. He's hit right there at the 24-yard line. Michigan State felt that Edwards fumbled the ball, but he was hit and down before he was disengaged from that big skin. It was Otis and Hay. It brings up a third down and six. A third down and six, and here comes a play in from old General Bo. Rosie Smith bringing it in. Reed goes out. That'll put Edwards and Smith at the tandem of the eye with Carter and Clayton. Carter coming wide to the right. Clayton wide to the left. The split back. Edwards and Smith will block for Dickey on this third and six. B.J. Dickey looking at a 5-4-2. And B.J. now throwing way over the head of the intended receiver, Clayton. Boy, that was poorly thrown way over his head. It brings up fourth down and six. So Michigan State with six minutes and 58 seconds remaining here in the first half. Trailing in the ball game, seven to zip. Will put their prolific punt return artist, Mr. Smith, number 20, back along with Hughes. Hughes has brought six back, averaging six and a half yards of return. Smith has only brought three back, averaging two yards per return. Standing back, of course, for Michigan is Brian Virgil on his own. 16-yard line. The point of scrimmage is the 29. There it is. Almost blocked. It is blocked. And Michigan State recovers on the 17-yard line. A repeat of last week as Brian Virgil's punt is blocked and the Spartans have new life here. It's a game of emotions and the green and white daubers are up right now as Michigan has a punt blocked for the second week in a row. And if Bo Schembechler was chagrined a week ago, he's got to be doubly chagrined right now. The ball rests at the 16-yard line. Check in the Michigan State offense. Burt Vaughn at quarterback. Let's see who's the tailback. Steve Smith, Middleton. Go in the I formation. Smith feet, Middleton close. Howard wide to the left. Bird wide to the right. Burt Vaughn asking the crowd to settle down, and the referee acknowledges that the crowd had not better get too rambunctious why they would against their own team on offense a big psychological lift here for Michigan State a block punt the first turnover of the ball game actually a well played football game the first 24 minutes with Michigan moving 60 or 96 yards to score Michigan State blocking a punt the man who blocked the punt we aren't sure number 28 is the lad who blocked the punt so giving credit is Jim Burroughs the cornerback Jim Burroughs, the Florida junior cornerback. Okay, Bert Vaughn sets his team. Smith deep, Middleton close. At the 16-yard line, there is a pass way over the head of the intended receiver. A quick pass after a turnover. They figure the defense is shocked a little bit because of the turnover, and it's always good for a big play, and Darrell Rodgers never to be shy on taking advantage of the big psychological edge which this block punt presented to Spartans. And so on a drop-back pass, the split receiver down here, was Gene Bird, the number one receiver for Michigan State. And so coming out here to the wide side, to the left again is Bird. To the right side is Howard. At the tailback is Hughes. Schramm close. Bird Vaughn at quarterback. Vaughn looks over a 5-2-4 defensive alignment. He's trailing in the ball game. So there's a fullback, and he's hit at the 14-yard line. On second down and 10, Andy Schramm averaging 3.5 yards a carry. I don't believe picked up his average coming into the game on that particular play. He picked up about two yards. And after the next play, we're going to pause 15 seconds for station identification. Six minutes and 27 seconds remaining. And the ball rests about 19, 18 yards in from the far eastern sideline. Michigan State in possession. Third down and nine. A key third down situation as Michigan State has converted two out of seven. Bird Vaughn now. Wide to the left is Bird. Wide to the right is Howard. Is Smith deep and Schramm close? And Bert Vaughn looks over Michigan's five-man front. And then he hands off. He's faking. Now he's being hit. He fumbled the ball. And it's intercepted by Harden at the 15, the 20. Harden at the 25, the 30, the 35, the 40, and drops at the 40-yard line. Mike Harden, who last week recovered two fumbles against California from his safety position, was the man who intercepted the pass after it was blocked in there by Mel Owens. Edwards deep, Smith close. 
Carter is deep on this side. No, Sir Smith. There is the handoff to Edwards. He's up over the 45, the 48-yard line. The quick play. Remember I said a moment ago, Michigan State blocked the punt, and immediately Burt Vaughn tried to throw a touchdown strike to Burr, but he overthrew him. This time, Michigan State, you could just see it, Lundo. They were sort of shocked after that interception, and Edwards just moved up the gut of that defense and picked up sizable yardage, almost a first down and second and one. Well, we've been throwing it at him, Bob, coming hard, rough, tough football, and... Uh... We're on the move right now. Mitchell wide to the right. Clayton wide to the left. Split backs Edwards and Smith. There is the handoff this time to Smith. And Smith is piled up over the midfield stripe. He needed about three yards. He picked up the necessary yardage for the first down. Michigan now has eight first downs. Check seven first downs. Michigan State has five first downs. Michigan's B.J. Dickey is one for four in passing. Burt Vaughn of Michigan State is one for seven. And a big interception that stopped Michigan State Short of the only scoring threat the Spartans have presented here in this first half. Five minutes remaining in the first half. Wide to the right this time is Carter. Wide to the left is Clayton. Edward Stephen Smith close. B.J. Dickey. Back on first and ten. Taking his time. It's down complete to, the, to Edwards at the 38-yard line. The same pass that picked up a critical first down for Michigan earlier in this quarter has moved over the center. That is B.J. Dickey throwing down the center of Michigan State's defense between the halfbacks to Stan Edwards who actually had faked the draw play again, moved down about 8 to 10 yards, turned around, caught the pass, and he's just shy of another first down for Michigan. Milheiser and Bass making the tackle as the Wolverines moving 96 yards in the first quarter after that interception now have the ball. Second and one on the state 38-yard line. There's Rosie Smith, and he's hit there at the 35-yard line. It's another first down for Michigan. The Wolverines and a stunned crowd here of Spartan fans we don't know how many in attendance here remember we told you the record was in 1975 when Ohio State played here over 80,000 the stadium officially holds 76,000 the fourth largest stadium in the Big Ten behind Michigan Wisconsin and the Wolverines right now have it first and ten four minutes remaining in the first quarter up over the ball comes Lilja the line follows wide to the left is Clayton at the slot out there is Marsh Carter is over here Carter goes in motion and watch Carter on a pass here. B.J. Dickey drops back now. He throws it out to Carter. Carter gets a block. He's down over the 20, or the 30. He's down to the 29-yard line. A new play just put in this week. Carter goes in motion from the right. And then across formation. B.J. Dickey drops back, picks up blocks from Edwards and Smith. And notice on that particular play, it was Marsh spread out at the slot on the tight side. Marsh is out at the slot, and then Mitch or Clayton, and Clayton it happened to be that time, wide out there. And then Carter back on this side, went in motion across formation, took the quick pass, and it picked up about seven yards. Second and three, Edwards deep, Smith close. B.J. Dickey under center, rolls out to the right. B.J.'s going to run. There's a flag on the play. A flag on the play, and it looked like illegal procedure against Michigan. That'll be a five-yard. The whistle blew before the ball was snapped, so that automatically stops the play. A five-yard penalty, and I believe, Jack, that's the first penalty of the ball game. Well, they, had a, they, had a they had a face mask penalty, correct. A 15-yarder that helped Michigan tremendously on their 96-yard touchdown drive. From their own three-and-a-half, the Wolverines moved in five minutes and 49 seconds all the way down the field with Wolfolk going in from the two-yard line in the closing minutes of the first quarter. And that's been the scoring picture for you fans who may have just tuned in. Michigan now has a second-and-eight on the Michigan State 33-yard line. It's Edward Steve Smith close. There is B.J. rolling out to the wide side of the field, looking for a receiver. Throws way over the head of Marsh. Boy, Dickey is way off on his passing. Dickey right now is only one for five. Two for five. He connected with Carter out there in the left flat. Edwards is coming up and patting B.J. on the fan. He's saying, come on, B.J., settle down, buddy. We still got the lead, seven to nothing. Three minutes and five seconds remaining. Third down and eight. The ball rests 18 yards in from the far eastern sideline. Michigan has eight first downs. Michigan State has five. The Wolverines have completed two out of six. Michigan State, one out of seven, but one big interception. It's Edwards deep and Rosie Smith close. The I formation, Dickey under center. Dickey has to Edwards. He cuts in at the 30, struggling for yardage at the 29, and Michigan State may be called for a late hit. He came in there and hit Edwards when he was struggling, but I guess Edwards was still struggling, and the safety man of the Spartans figured he better put a stop to that. So it brings up now a fourth down and about four. Fourth and four at the 29-yard line. Two minutes and 44 seconds remaining. Old General Bo is going to call this one. They're going to try for a field goal. 
And it's number two, it's Brian Virgil. Brian Ozzy Virgil, who in field goals is one out of four. He kicked one against Notre Dame. And this time, kneeling is Jackson at the 36. It'll be a 46-yard attempt. Lil just over the ball. If you hear the horn blow twice, you'll know it's good. It's short. It's short. It was straightened up, and it was right direction, but it was short. And Michigan State takes over on their own 29 over this, the Michigan Football Network. In first downs, Michigan has eight. Michigan State has five. The Spartans now take over after Michigan's missed field goal attempt. They have it first and 10 on their own 29-yard line. Smith deep, Middleton close. The I formation, Vaughn at quarterback. Looks at Michigan's flux five-man front. There's a hand up this time to Smith. He's finding daylight. No, he doesn't. 30, 31-yard line. He was just looking around for daylight. He's jumping in there like a jumping jack. You can just see him darting around, looking for an opening. Okay, Kites is shoring it up at the nose guard, looking at Bert Vaughn, who has his second and eight on his own 30. He has split back. That's a passing offense. He's back to the 19. He's going to be sacked, and he throws the screen pass out here to Schramm. That got to the 35, 40, 42. Dropped out of bounds at the 45-yard line. And it is Schramm, the same lad who caught that same pass early in the ballgame, right after the opening kickoff, which picked up the first first down of the ballgame, and it went to State. That time, Michigan State picked up their sixth first down of the ballgame. They've had two passing and four running. And now the Spartans trailing 7 to nothing. And I might add that one Mr. Mort Anderson has kicked three field goals on the last play of three of their ball games in the last play of the first half. And right now, Bird wide to the right. Williams wide to the left. It's the I formation. Smith deep, Middleton close. Bird Vaughn under center. First and 10 on his own 45-yard line. Looking at a 5 2 4 and he gives him a drop play to the halfback, who breaks the tackle, breaks another one, and is dropped at the 49-yard line, and it is Steve Smith again. Owens finally making the tackle, as Godfrey and Kite both had a hand on him, but they were partially blocked, both Godfrey and Kite, where Owens made the tackle, and it brings up second down and six, a minute and three seconds remaining in the first half. The ball rests on the 49-yard line, and Michigan's coaches are beseeching the Michigan defense to not let Michigan State get within that 40-yard line because that's Mort Anderson's range with a field goal. Wide to the right is Bird. Wide to the left this time is Howard. There's a drop back pass by Bond from his own 39. He's trying to find running room. He's going to be eaten back there. No, he's hit from behind. He fumbles the ball. It's picked up by Michigan, and he runs down there 53. Owens, I don't believe he can advance that, though. It's Michigan's ball at their own 47-yard line. As Bert Bond is guilty of the second Spartan cough-up. The first one was when he was hit from the blind side and the ball went into the air and Harden intercepted and brought it out to the Michigan 34-yard line. And this time it's picked up by Mel Owens, a fumble. Michigan has now picked up 10 turnovers, two so far in this game. Just picked up a fumble. They have it first and 10. Wangler goes off hands to Edwards. He couldn't control the ball. Wangler, that is, on a slow take from his center. And Wangler calls timeout right now to go over and talk to old General Bo as he slipped as he took the ball from center. Wangler came out, slipped, and then handed the lead off to Edwards. By that time, the blocks were made, the hole was there, and Edwards was slow getting up there because Wangler couldn't get away from center. Meanwhile, here comes motion with Mitchell. Wangler goes out. Wangler's going to keep. He's over the 50, down to the Spartan 48-yard line. And I'd hazard a guess that old Bo George Patton Schumbecker likes his ground forces now to run out the clock here, leading 7-0. He's stopping the clock, though. Michigan. Michigan calls timeout, as Bo probably will run. Maybe he'll go over a pass here on the long bomb with Carter down there. And, and five with 16 seconds remaining. Wide to the right is Clayton. Wide to the left is Carter. Edwards, Deep and Smith close. Pitches off to Edwards. They're going to run out the clock on the running. Edwards is down to the 40. Cuts into 35 and is knocked out of bounds at the 34-yard line. And there are nine seconds remaining. And once again, we may have a field goal attempt. Who knows? Bo is coming out on the field telling Michigan to call timeout if they didn't get out of bounds. No, they're calling holding against Michigan. That is the second penalty against Michigan. Michigan State has had one, a critical face mask penalty on Michigan's very fine sustained 96-yard drive in the closing minutes of that first quarter as the Wolverines went on in to score the only score of the game. Michigan was penalized, uh, oh, about five minutes ago in this second quarter on an illegal procedure. 
He pitches off to Edwards. They're going to run out the clock. Cutting back in at the 40. At the 45, he's reversing his field at the 50. He runs out the clock, goes out of bounds at the 47-yard line. That's all there is. There isn't anymore. The first half into the record book. Michigan, a 96-yard scoring drive. Two turnovers by State Ford and any chances the Spartans had of scoring. A big halftime show coming up. Bob Foreman, the Michigan State Athletic Director, Joe Kearney. Both fans, a great show. Stay with us. The same spot in your radio dial over this. The Michigan 7, Michigan State. Zip Football Network. And, uh, don't mention the other aspect of my football, will you? <laughs> you mean the kicking? You're, you're still concerned about it. No kidding. Yeah, no kidding. Now, wait a minute. Before you go, that drive, that 96-yard drive was a masterpiece. Yeah, it, we did a good job on that drive, and and uh, we should be moving more consistently than we are. we got to do a better job second half. Well, how about defense? Well, defense is good. They make the big plays. We put them in bad field position a couple times, and they pulled us out. But they've done that all year. Okay, good luck. Their option play seemed to be the thing that carried them to a 7 0 lead. Well, it did. At the first, we tried to get one uh, type of containment on it, and we changed it in the second quarter, and we were much better then. And so we'll probably use that containment in the second half. Okay. Thank Best you. of luck, Coach. Along with Carter. There it is. The second half kickoff is into the book, and it'll be way out of the field of play, just as Ali kicked off twice for Michigan in the same fashion. Michigan State's fine place kicker. Mr. Mort Anderson, the 6'1", 180-pound sophomore from over in Denmark is where he was born. He ended up over down in Indianapolis, Indiana, and came up here to college and has done a tremendous job place kicking. He led state in scoring in 78 with 73 points, and he has 52 consecutive extra points, and that's a Michigan State record. But back on the field, there's B.J. Dickey. He sets his team. He has Edwards deep and Reed close. Wide to the left, two wide outs, Carter and Clayton. There is a pitch off this time to Edwards. Up through the left side, he gets a block. He's hit at the line of scrimmage and dropped right there on the 19-yard line. And the Spartans are aroused right now. Savage, Webb, Hay, Mitten, and McCormick. A front five averaging 229 pounds a man. Michigan's front seven right now averaging 239 pounds a man. Marsh, Moransky, Arbesnik, Lodget Center, Becker, Paris, and Mitchell. Those seven men will break out of the offensive huddle in the white jerseys, indicative of a Big Ten team playing away from home. B.J. Dickey at quarterback. Carter wide to the left, Clayton wide to the right. It's the I formation. Edward Steve Reed close, second and ten from his own 20-yard line. B.J. Dickey looks at a 5-2-4 defensive alignment. Michigan leads in the ball game seven to zip. There is Edwards hurtling his way to the 24-yard line, trying to get blocks over there from Moransky and Arbesnik. But moving in nicely was Pat Mitten, who submarine and grab legs one of them once the ball carrier, Mr. Stan Edwards. And for Mitten, that was his third tackle of the afternoon, his 24th of 1979. For those of you who may have just tuned in, Michigan has scored, oh, in the last five minutes of the first quarter, moving 96 yards. Wolfolk going in for the touchdown. The extra point was good, and that's been it. State threatened twice. They caught up the ball both times, once on a fumble and once on a pass interception. Edwards deep, Reed close. Third and six. There's a pitch off. There's the end of Ronda Carter, and he fumbles a ball at the 21-yard line, and it is snuffed right there, and luckily he maintained possession. The hole was there, too. They weren't expecting that one, and Carter couldn't quite get the reverse from Edwards. B.J. Dickey to Edwards coming back to Carter, and it would have worked beautifully. Those plays always work on the blackboard. But down on the field of play here in the opening series of downs in the second half, it went awry. As Carter fumbled, recovered his own fumble, and Virgil, the last punt he tried was blocked. He's standing on his own seven-yard line. Listen to the voice of Michigan State football in the background. The Spartans are rushing eight men. There it is. He's going to get this one off, and he gets a nice long spiral at the 38-yard line. It's huge to the 40, the 44. He's hit at the 45. He breaks the tackle, and he is piggyback ridden into the ground at the 45-yard line, running about eight yards along that 45-yard marker. A 40-yard kick by Virgil and a six-yard return and the man shaken up on the play was Stan Edwards Edwards is down and seemingly hurt on the 45-yard line and while they're working on Stan suppose we pause for a word over this the very maize and blue green and white and we're looking at Edwards he seems to be okay Michigan leading seven to nothing over this the Michigan football network High formation he has Smith deep and Middleton close Bird to the right, Howard to the left. There's a hand off to Smith. He gets away from one tackler, two tackers over the midfield strike of the Michigan 45, and the piggyback ridden into the ground at the Wolverine 40-yard line. Beautiful running in there by that scatback, Steve Smith of Michigan State. Boy, he ran well behind his blockers, and then he saw daylight to the right side and then moved out toward that eastern sideline, picked up a key block over there by Strata, the right tackle, and that was it. 
wide to the right is Howard. He has shoes deep and Schramm close to secondary. As far as second string alignment on the I formation, there's a handoff to Hughes. He breaks the tackle, but is hit at the 39-yard line. Broke one tackle, and there's a flag on the play, and we're not sure what he saw in there. Face masking, I believe. It looks as all face mask, and I'm not sure who it's against. Curtis Greer was in there on the tackle. Holding against Michigan. Did you get that, Lundo? Offsetting penalties, I know that. They're offsetting penalties, Bob. They're personal foul against these little confrontation out there, and they tempers fly occasionally and get a little high. I noticed on the kickoff a couple of things happening, and that was one they offsetting penalties. Dead ball foul, second down, Bob. And the two men involved, the biggest man on the field for Michigan State, Angie Fields, a 290-pound senior, 6'6", six six against Simpkins, 220 pounds. Ted on the Michigan 39-yard line. It's Smith deep. There is shoes, and there is the run, and he goes out of bounds at the 30-yard line. A pass to Jim Williams, the end. And Williams has just caught his first pass of 1979. Coming into the ball game, this California junior, 5'11", had not caught a pass against Illinois, Oregon, Miami, or Notre Dame. And he caught his first pass in the green and white uniform for 1979. And it couldn't have come at a better time as it brings up third and one. Raymond making the tackle. So it'll be the I formation. Hughes deep, Schramm close. First point under center. Wide to the right is Bird. Wide to the left this time is Williams. And there is the handoff. He needs one. Hughes gets it to the 28, call it the 29-yard line. And remember, the series started after Smith's run just over the 40. And there it is, Michigan State picking up their eighth first down. Both teams have eight first downs. Michigan has seven points. Michigan State is zipped. But the Spartans are rolling. Owens and Canavino making a dual tackle in there for the Wolverines. Michigan front five right now. Owens, Godfrey, Kite, Greer, and Needham. Canavino and Simpson backing it up. Stu Harris with a strong safety to the wide side. Harden at the free safety. And looking that over is Bert Vaughn. He has Smith deep and Middleton close. He's under center. He has one tight end and the pro set. There's a head up this time to Smith. He's hit right there at the 26-yard line. First and 10 and Smith gets about three yards. He tried to break the seam, but there was no seam in there. As Simpkins needing two tackles, and that's one of them. Simpkins now has 399 tackles on his maize and blue career. The Michigan co-captain on defense. Up over the ball comes Foster. The line follows. The I formation. Wide to the right is Bird. Wide to the left this time is Williams. It's Reeves deep. Schramm close. Bird Vaughn looks at a 5-2-4 defensive alignment for Michigan. It'll be second and seven. And he hands off to the halfback who gets over the 20 and down to the 19-yard line. He may have picked up a first down. He's just short of the 18-yard line. And Schramm picking him up and laying him down in there in the green and white. And here come Middleton and Reeves Smitty back in. Fullbacks and tailbacks changing on every play. And the ball is at the 19-yard line. Third down and one. Wide to the right goes Bird. Wide to the left this time is Williams. It's Smith deep and Middleton close. Bird Vaughn under center. He looks at Michigan's 4-4-3 defensive alignment. And in a long count from center, he takes. He hands off to Smith, who needs one. He's broken to the 15 and dropped at the 14-yard line. A fine tackle made in there by Owens. Mel Owens playing a whale of a game. Hulk, as his teammates call him. The ball rests 18 yards in from this to Western sideline. Michigan State trailing. Michigan 7 to nothing. but the Spartans are moving here. Their first possession here in the third period of the second half. And they are an aroused band of Michigan State. Jolly Green Giants right now. Up over the ball comes Matt Foster. The line follows. Wide to the right is Bird. Wide to the left is Williams. The I formation used deep and Shram close. Bird Vaughn under center. Looks at Michigan's 5-2 defense. First and 10 on the Michigan 14-yard line. There it is, a head up this time to Schramm. He's hit, but he wiggles to the 10-yard line, picking up four and a half yards. These Spartans are driving for every inch. And here comes Smitty and Middleton again. Take Schramm out, take Smitty out. Canavino and Godfrey making the tackle in there as Michigan's defense is being tested to the utmost right now. Michigan's defense has only given up three touchdowns in four games, and right now, wide to the right is Bird, wide to the left is Williams. It's the I formation, Smith deep and Middleton close. Bird Vaughn on the Michigan nine-yard line, second and five. Looking at a tight 5-4, and there he hands it off to Smith, and Smith is hit at the seven, still on his feet, wiggling at the six-yard line, picking up on the play about three yards, and this is where the top gets tougher. And they separate the men from the boys inside the 10-yard line, the most difficult 10 yards in football. As Michigan State is on the lip of the cup here and tying up this ball game, nine minutes and 11 seconds remaining in the third period. 
It'll be third down and two yards to go. A critical third down situation as Michigan State's first point is converted four out of nine. Michigan State has converted four out of nine, and there's a timeout down in the playing field, and I'm in over this, the very maize and blue Michigan football network. At the I formation, will be Hughes deep and Stram close and Bird Boy under center. They need two yards to, for the first down. Six and a half yards for the tying up touchdown. Bird Boy handing off to Hughes. Hughes gets the first down, and he gets into the end zone. Seven to six. Seven to six and look at the Spartans go wild and 79,000 partisan fans go equally wild up in the stands here, the double deck stadium across the way, double deck on this side, one deck at each end, and the voice of Michigan State football goes dark raving bananas here. This is what college football is all about. One team leading seven to nothing. The other team coming back strong here in the third period is Michigan State has just moved 55 yards in 10 plays, using up three minutes and 53 seconds on the clock. And a winning touchdown by Mr. Hughes. And Anderson will hold the cornerback on defense. Mort Anderson will attempt the extra point to tie it up. It's snapped, it's spotted, it's kicked, it's end over end. And Mr. Anderson has a new Michigan State record of 53 extra points in a row over the last two years. Michigan State 7. Michigan 7. The Wolverines are coming out offensively now, and psychologically that old emotional factor in football has turned from maize and blue in the latter part of the first half to green and white here in the opening stages here of the second half. Eight minutes remaining in the third period in a tremendous football game. Well, we said that all the emotions been building here in Spartanville and in the Athens of the West down in Ann Arbor. Carter and Edwards go deep. Kicking off will be the same gentleman who just tied up the ball game a moment ago. The six foot one inch, 180 pound sophomore who was born in Denmark. Came over here about 10 years ago. He's grown up, took his high school work down in Indiana and came up here to Michigan State. Anderson this time not quite so deep but it's into the end zone is taken by Edwards at the goal line to the 5 the 10 the 15 and he's dropped at the 17 yard line as Michigan now has the ball 83 yards away from going ahead and Michigan State is aroused right now Michigan check out that offense it looks like Edwards Reed and Clayton in the backfield and check out that quarterback who's coming in at quarterback number 10 and number 5 it's B.J. Dickey. B.J. Dickey, who in passing today is three out of seven. Up over the ball comes George Lilgio. Wide to the right this time is Mitchell. At the slot on the right side is Marsh. There goes Mitchell in motion. There's B.J. going out. Pitches off to Edwards around the 15. And he's hit at the 20 and picked up about three yards on the play. His state is having great work done in there by Dan Bass. You know, Michigan State in their front five. They line up that front five. And their tackles contain inside. Everything that comes inside, they contain. They just covered Edwards after he took the pitch out and made the tackle at just shy of the 20-yard line. Second and seven, Edwards deep, Reed close. There's the fake to Reed. It's over the middle, and it's up in the air and intercepted by Michigan State, I believe. No, no, he trapped it. No, no. Incomplete forward pass, a big break for Michigan. The ball was intended down there for Edwards. It was thrown high. It hit Edwards' hands, went up in the air like a basketball, came down, and the man who almost made the interception was Bernard Hay, the third leading tackler on the team, almost came up with a big interception. He hasn't had an interception this year. That junior from down in Florida. So it goes back to the original point of scrimmage, third is seven, and Michigan has yet to pick up a first down here in this third period. Michigan had eight in the first half. Michigan State now has ten. It's Edwards deep, Reed close. Mitchell in motion. There's a handoff this time to Reed, and he gets about five or six yards to the 25, but he's shy of the first down. So now Michigan will be forced to punt. The last time they punted was to start this third period after the opening kickoff. Wolverine failed to pick up a first down. They punted. Michigan State brought it back 55 yards to tie up the ball game with Hughes going in from the Wolverine six-yard line. Lil just snaps it. There's Virgil's kick. 
A beautiful high, long spiral, and it's taken down there by Hughes at the 34. Reverses his field, breaks the tackle, and is hit right there at the 39-yard line. Well, this time Michigan State is 60 yards away from going ahead. The last time they had to move 55 yards to tie it up, a 41-yard kick by Virgil. A four-yard return by Hughes. It'll be Bert Vaughn, first and 10 on his own, 39-yard line. Michigan has a flex five-man front with a tackle back. That's Godfrey. There's a handoff to the tailback. He's into the open, spinning the 45, the 47, the 48-yard line. Seven yards on the play. Stu Harris, the Chagrin Falls Jr., making the tackle for Michigan. As right now, you can just tell, Lundo, the psychological advantage, the emotional pitch is green and white. It certainly is, Bob. I think once they've held our offense, We've only had it on two occasions and had a punch both times. Their Dobbers are up. we got to get organized, Bob. You're right. Dobbers are up on state. Wide to the right is Williams. Wide to the left is Bird. It's Reeves deep. Shram close. Bird Vaughn under center at quarterback. He has a second and one on his own 48-yard line. Looking over a five-man front of Michigan. There he hands off this time to the tailback Reeves. And, boy, he's hit, and I don't believe he made the first down. He only needed a yard. Moving in was Needham. The big defensive end, along with Dale Kite, they made a hand of two-man tackle at the 48-yard line. Brings up third down and one. And can the McCartney Monsters stop here? The momentum of Michigan State, they've really got it rolling now. The first time they had the ball here in the second half, they rolled 55 yards, and they tied it up. Now they started this drive on their own 39-yard line. Wide to the right is Bird. Wide to the left is Williams. It's the I formation. Hughes deep, Middleton close. Bird Vaughn under center. Looks at a 5-3, four umbrella. It's third and one as Bert Vaughn is under center, and he hands off to his fullback, who makes the first down down to the Michigan 47-yard line. Beautifully conceived and well executed. We're going to pause 15 seconds for station identification over this, the Michigan 7, Michigan State 7, football network. This is WJR Detroit. Smith seat, Shram close, pro set. There it is, Smith. He's hit, and he's tackled right there, but he's driving that body of his to the 45-yard line on sheer strength. Let's get those dimensions of Steve Smith. The 5'8", 181-pound junior from Kentucky, 19 years old, number 20. And I'll tell you, that kid has a lot of drive because he was pushing two 230-pound linemen of Michigan. Canavino, 220 pounds, and Godfrey, 240 pounds. That's an average of 230 between them. It's used deep, Middleton close, Bird Vaughn under center at quarterback. He looks over Michigan's five-man front, a 5-2-4. Then he rolls out to the right, he hands off to Hughes. Hughes is trapped right there at the 43-yard line. Fine driving tackle in there on second and seven. It'll be third down and about four. It was Owens and Kite. And let me point out a very significant fact right now, that Michigan felt they had to stop the run, and they haven't been able to do it, and that's what maintained State's offensive drive here this afternoon. As Michigan State has only completed two passes out of eight, and they've had one intercepted. So it's been a running game. It looks like Bo Schembechler in green and white. Wide to the right is Bird. Wide to the left is Williams. It's Smith deep and Shram close. Under center at quarterback is Bert Vaughn. He looks at a 5-2-4 umbrella. He has a third and five. He wants this five yard and he hands off to the half. He's hit back there. Smitty at the 47. And Michigan State is stopped as McCartney's monsters once more. Rise to the occasion and the Wolverine Dobbers defensively rose up. And well they might here with three minutes and 58 seconds remaining in the third period. As Canavino just drove in there blitzing on a linebacking situation with Michigan's front five. Kurt Greer plays to the tight end side of Michigan State's offense. And the other side, the other tackle, who in this case happens to be Godfrey, will drop back and, as they call it in football terminology, flux. And all that means is that he's dropping off the line of scrimmage about two and a half yards. And then he will stunt with the middle guard kites. By that, I mean they'll cross charge. One man will go one way and one man the other. So Michigan now in a punt formation defensively. Watch Stackelwood take the ball almost blocked. He gets his foot into the ball, and it looks like it's going into the end zone. Automatic touchback. Carter's back. A 46-yard kick. Now we're all set for Michigan. B.J. Dickey, Edwards deep, Reed close, Dickey at quarterback. Two wide outs to the right. There's a handoff to Edwards around the left side. He's up over the 20. Still trying to drive to the 23 and a half yard line, picking up three and a half yards on the play. Michigan just can't seem to get the blocking off on that left or right side. As Michigan State's front five in there, McCormick, Mitten, Hay, Webb, and Savage. Team up in there. Actually, that was almost a gang tackle at the 23 yard line. B.J. Dickey has completed three out of eight, one more than his counterpart, Bert Vaughn. Wide to the right now comes Mitchell. Wide to the left over there is Clayton. Smitty is close on the I formation with Edwards deep. 
There's a handout to Smitty, and he's hit after he gets about three yards to the 26-yard line. And here comes a critical third down. I say critical because Michigan has had the ball twice here in the second half and have failed to pick up a first down. Now, they had eight first downs and seven points in the first half. They had 171 yards rushing and passing, while Michigan State was under 100 and only had six first downs and had no points. But it's been all Michigan State. And to maintain any kind of emotional edge that they had by stopping State a moment ago, the Wolverines almost have to pick up a first down here. Two wide outs, Carter and Clayton. It's the I formation. Edwards deep and Smith close. Dickey now on the drop play. Gives to Edwards. And I don't believe he's going to make it. He breaks the tackle and makes it to the 30-yard line. A great second effort by Stanley Everett. The whirling dervish. That great tailback junior from Kettering High School in Detroit. Broke with that 205-pound frame. He was hit back of the line of scrimmage at the 25. He broke a tackle at the 27. He spun away at the 28. And he got that precious third down. And that's a big, big emotional edge that Michigan must maintain here to get back into this ball game. Okay, Dickey sets his team. Wide to the left is Clayton. Wide to the right out here comes Mitchell. It's Edwards deep and Smith close. BJ's under center at the 32-yard line. He rolls with his fullback, and now he pitches off this time to the tailback, Edwards. Oh, and he's sandwiched in there at the 34-yard line. Edwards is hit and hit hard at the 34-yard line. It'll be second down now and about seven. Second and seven. Ball resting 18 yards in from this, the western sideline. Here comes Carter in with a play. Take out Mitchell. Put in Carter. As the Wolverines front seven, Marsh, Moransky, Powers is in, Lilja, Becker, Paris, Bubba Paris, in there trying to open up holes for that tailback and that fullback. It's second and eight, a minute and 26 seconds remaining in the third period. Edward Stephen Smitty close. There is BJ back for a pass. He's going to the long bomb to Clayton. Clayton catches it at the 25 to 20 to 50. That's a great Touchdown, Ralph Clayton. Ralph Clayton electrifies the base of Blue Heart. And Mr. Clayton scores his first touchdown of 1979. Michigan climaxes a touchdown drive of 80 yards going 66 yards on that pass play. That is the longest touchdown pass thrown by B.J. Dickey, and he'll never forget that when his Clayton danced out of the hands of a would-be safety man down there, Mr. Mark Anderson, and 80 yards in five plays. Tony Jackson is kneeling. Now you know what I said when it was so important that Stan Edwards pick up that first down on third and three. And he did, that Kettering High School youngster wearing the maize and blue. And then B.J. came back and threw that 66-yard bomb. Virgil is attempting the extra point. A little just snaps the ball now. It's spotted by Jackson. It's kicked. It's end over end. And it's good. Michigan 14. Michigan State 7. Over this, the very maize and blue Michigan football network. Bob for back here. And there's Ali kicking off for the third time in the ball game. It goes to the five-yard line taken by Smith to the 10 to the 15. He's hit at the 20. He breaks it at the 25. He's hit at the 32-yard line. A great return by Stevie Smith, the lad who has carried over 100 yards for the green and white here this afternoon. Michigan's B.J. Dickey just accounted for his fourth touchdown of 1979. That is his second pass for a touchdown. You know how far his first one was? Nine yards to Norm Betts in the Northwestern game. And this 66-yard bomb, Dickey will never forget. To Ralph Clayton, the senior, from Detroit's Cash. Detroit up over the ball now comes Foster. State has to come back. The Daubers of the Maize and Blue are up, and State right now is down a bit. They have Smith deep in Middleton close. Bird Vaughn at quarterback. Underneath center, he looks at Michigan's 5 2. The Wolverines come in there and look at Bird Smith has plenty of time way over the head of the intended receiver. The intended receiver is Jimmy Williams, who was out of bounds. And so the ball comes back to the original point of scrimmage as Michigan State here. They stay on the ground. That's how they tied Michigan up. They've only completed two passes. They have taken to the air nine times. And that time on first and ten, they threw a bomb down that eastern sideline. Our spotter, Jimmy Anacek, spotted Mort Anderson, the free safety, coming in and blitzing time and again. That left center field open, and Michigan's coaches caught it up here, and they sent Clayton down in center field. Between the defensive halfbacks, there was no safety man, and that's the 66 yard. There's a pitch out to the halfback, Hughes. He's hit at the 39-yard line. Remember, the series started 
at the 32. It was Derek Hughes, the fine South Carolina sophomore. Coming into the game, he legged the ball for the green and white 46 times for a four-yard average. Michigan 14, Michigan State 7, 42 seconds remaining in the third period. Canavino makes a tackle for the Mason Blue, Michigan's front five right now. Weighing in defensively at 230 pounds a man, Michigan State's front seven weighing in at 221 a pound. Michigan has a nine pound per man advantage in the trench. Not too significant, however. Bert Vaughn sets his team, third and three. It's the I formation, Smith deep and Middleton close. Bird wide to the right, Williams wide to the left. There's a hand up the fullback. He's dropped right there, Middleton. As Michigan's defensive man moved in there beautifully, Godfrey. Chris Godfrey making his sixth tackle of the afternoon, playing a whale of a game, separating, grabbing legs, and one of them was the ball carrier, Alonzo Middleton, number 44. And the complexion of this ball game has definitely turned maize and blue. The kick, end over end, and is taken by Jolly at the 25. Jolly's at the 30, and he's dropped at the 33-yard line. Jolly moved back about four steps from the 30 back to the 25 as Mr. Ray Stackowitz didn't get as much foot into that ball as he usually does, averaging 44 and a half yards. And this afternoon, he had punted 54, 30, 30, 37, and 46. Lundo? Bob, I think we rushed quite well in that, and I don't know whether we got a piece of that one or not. Just looked like he kind of kicked a knuckleball in the normal spiral. So we put a little pressure on him. It shows what can happen. Could be. Okay, Michigan set now. It's B.J. Dickey. He has Edwards deep and Reed close. Clayton and Mitchell wide to the left. First and 10 on their own 33-yard line. There is the handoff to Edwards up over the 35, and he hurdles two would-be tacklers to the 38-yard line. He picks up about three yards. Oh, boy, I tell you, these players are asking no quarter and giving no quarter out there. Edwards deep, Reed close. Dickey now rolls out to the right, gives off to Reed. Reed up over the 40 to the third 42, unpiling around the 43-yard line. Remember, the punt by Jolly was brought back to the 33-yard line. They're unpiling right around the 42-yard line. Michigan on a another one of those third down situations. Third and a long one. Clayton along with Mitchell. Edwards deep, Reed close. B.J. Dickey, third and one at the 42-yard line. B.J. Dickey keeps the ball, and he doesn't make it. B.J. Dickey doesn't make it. Third and one, and he needed a yard, and he didn't make it. And now Michigan will be forced to turn over the ball here with 13 minutes and 30 seconds remaining in the ball game that was a critical third down michigan could well have used that one but that's the breaks of football and now here comes number two again mr brian virgil the buchanan michigan senior averaging 36 yards a punt he had one blocked a week ago he had one blocked earlier in this ball game in the second period state could not capitalize state is rushing eight men he's standing on the 28 he's going to get it away there it is a beautiful long punt and going back, it'll go into the end zone. Automatic touchback. A very fine kick by Brian Virgil. A 58-yarder when he needed it most over the following seven years. Now it's 1979. Michigan State, first and 10 on their own 20-yard line. Smith deep and Middleton close. They fake to Smitty. There's a pass out here, and it is complete to the 31-yard line. Complete down here to Bird, and he's dropped immediately down here. By number 16, Mike Jolly coming over. That's a first down, though. They pick up 11 precious yards, they being Michigan State. 12 minutes and 50 seconds remaining. And the scoreboard show that that was a great pass. If you're watching the scoreboards or if you were here, you could see that they put up signs, pictures, whatnot. Wide to the right is Williams. Minnesota 14, Purdue 7. What's happening up in gold country there? Hughes deep, Shram close, first and 10 on their own 31-yard line. Bird Vaughn handing off to the fullback. He battles his way for three yards from the 31 to the 34-yard line. Andy Shram, the fullback. 12 minutes even remaining in the ball game. Smith deep and Middleton close. Wide to the left is Bird, wide to the right is Williams. Bird Vaughn looks at a 5-2-4 defense by Michigan. They've been out there a lot, that defense. There it is. He can't find a receiver, and he throws now way downfield. And it's intercepted by Michigan at the 33-yard line. It's Stu Harris makes the first interception of his career that couldn't come at a better time for the Maize and Blue as Michigan has just picked up their third turnover of the ball game. A pass interception, a recovered fumble, and now another pass interception. The pass interception first by Harden, the recovered fumble by Owens, and now a pass interception way overthrown as both passers here cannot seem to find the long bomb except B.J. Dickey on a 66-yard bomb to Ralph Clayton to give Michigan the edge right now, 14 to seven. 
about four minutes ago here in this ball game. Michigan now is set first and ten on their own 33-yard line. The I formation, Edwards deep and Reed close. B.J. Dickey enters center at quarterback, and he hands the ball off to Edwards, and Edwards gets nothing but maize and blue behind in front of him, and he gets up over the 35 to the 38-yard line, picking up a foul. Call it a five-yard gain up the center, and he got blocks in there of a Becker, Lilja, and Johnny Powers playing his heart out, that senior from Illinois. Remember, he had knee surgery along with Bubba Paris. They played very sparingly last week against California. They did not play at all against Northwestern Notre Dame or Kansas, and now they're in there, both of them, trying to bolster up that front offensive line. Wide to the right is Clayton. It'll be second down and four. It's the I formation. Edwards deep and Reed close, and B.J. Dickey has off to Edwards again. He doesn't get a block. He makes one at the 40, gets to the 41-yard line, and here we have another third down situation for B.J. Dickey, and he is connected so far on five out of 14. Five out of 14 for B.J. Dickey, and it's Savage who made the tackle, and this is a big one for Michigan State defensively. This is a big one for Michigan offensively as the Wolverines lead in the ballgame 14 to 7. Ten minutes and 45 seconds remaining in the ballgame. It could be a lifetime for one team or the other. Up over the ball comes Loja. We have two tight ends in a balanced line. Edward Stephen Reed close. Clayton flank wide to the left. He means nothing. There's a pitch off to Edwards. He needs three. He cuts it. He has it to the 45-yard line. That time it was B.J. Dickey not keeping, pitching off to Edwards, and then moving up to the 45-yard line. Get B.J. on On their own 45-yard line, Rick Steep, Reed Close. B.J. Dickey hands off to, pitches off to Ricks, and he's down over the 50. And he's still on his feet at the 49-yard line as Michigan moves into state territory and the clock continues to wind. 10 minutes and 16 seconds, Michigan 14, Michigan State 7. Boy, oh boy, hang on to your kilowatts. This is going to be a fabulous 10 minutes of football here from East Lansing. The ball is right on the 50-yard line. Just off the helmet there, that Spartan out there on that gridiron. As Michigan State here, digging in defensively. Michigan on offense here on a second down and five. Rick's deep, Reed close. There is the handoff to Reed, and he picks up about three and a half yards to the Michigan State 46 and a half yard line. It'll be third down. Right in the center of the field, midway between the sidelines. Third and two, they need two, and they have two tight ends in the balance line, and B.J. Dickey under center. And B.J. Dickey rolls out, and he gets absolutely nothing as he eats the ball on the 50 yard line. As B.J. Dickey kept the ball, and Michigan State rose up there as a one man, and they look like Sparta. And Sparta, who's he? Well, he stands at the entrance of the Michigan State Athletic Establishment. He's a big ceramic Greek Spartan warrior. He stands 10 feet 6 inches high, he weighs 3 tons, and he symbolizes all Michigan State athletic teams. And that time, it looked like Sparta came in and decked Mr. B.J. Brian Virgil standing back on the Michigan 37-yard line. There's the snap. There's the kick. A nice long kick, and it's coming down into the end zone again. A good kick. As Virgil's coming through with a 49-yard kick on top of a 58-yard punt a moment ago. And with a clock showing 8 minutes and 45 seconds, anything can happen from East Lansing, and it probably will, because that's what Michigan State, Michigan football is all about. That all over is Bert Vaughn. He sets his team, Smitty deep. And Middleton close, number 20 and 44, right behind Bert Vaughn. There's a hand up to Smitty. He follows Middleton. He's hit right there at the 22-yard line. Smitty takes it from the quarterback. And making the tackle in there was Godfrey and Kites, both in there making the tackle. Slowly unpiling, eight minutes and 32 seconds remaining. Michigan 14, Michigan State 7. As Schramm goes in along with Smith this time. Check, that's Reeves coming into the ball game. Reeves deep. This is a passing situation with split backs. Reeves and Schramm will block, and so will a guard pull back, giving Bird Vaughn, he hopes, enough time to pass to either Bird or there it is, downfield, way over the head, almost intercepted, almost caught by Bird. And almost an interception by Harden on a... Bird Vaughn went back. He couldn't find the men open. He had plenty of time from that pocket blocking by Reeves along with Schramm and Foster. But Bird was the intended receiver, and it brings up third down and seven. And here comes Smith and Middleton back in. And now what is Dale Rogers cooked up here on this third down and seven? Michigan 14, Michigan State 7, 8 minutes and 5 seconds remaining. Bird wide to the left. Williams wide to the right. 
There's Bird Vaughn looking at a 4-5. Now they shift in the I formation. Smith deep Middleton. Look for the draw play. There it is. There's the draw play. There it is, Smitty. He gains only two yards to the 25-yard line. That's a play that worked so well in the first half on a situation that called for a pass. And so Michigan State now will send the number one putter in the Big Ten back. And Ray Stakowitz now can cut that lo foot loose. Then he had a 46, he had a 30, a 30, a 37, and a 37. He's standing on the 11-yard line. There's the snapback. There it is, a wobbly kick. It's going to be taken by Carter. It bounces out of bounds inside the 30-yard line, right about the 29-yard line. Let's pause 15 seconds for station identification. Over this, the Michigan 14, Michigan State 7. Well, here we come. Back to you. There's BJ under center. There's a handout to Wolfhawk, and Wolfhawk is hit and dropped for a two-yard loss. Call it a yard loss, as he's hit immediately by Tanya Webb, number 98. Moving in there, making his second sack of the 79th season, his third pack for the afternoon. And they're putting the ball where it'll show 11 yards to go for the first down. Second and 11, seven minutes and 10 seconds remaining. As Michigan's B.J. Dickey has Wolfhawk deep and Reed close in the I formation when they break out offensively. Here comes Carter along with Clayton, wide to the left. It's Wolfhawk deep and Reed close and B.J. Dickey under center, second and 11. He looks at a five-man, 5-4-2 five, defense, and he hands off to Wolfhawk, who gets one block. He cuts the tackle, but boy, there are five Spartans all in there making the tackle, and Michigan running-wise can't pick up enough ground to bury themselves in right now in those last two plays. They lost exactly a yard, so it'll be third down and still 11. As the tackle made in there, headed a five-man foursome, Otis along with Cooper, both in there for the Spartans. Michigan 14, Michigan State 7, 6 minutes and 28 seconds remaining. Michigan has the ball and about 21 yards in from this, the western sideline. Up over the ball comes Locher. The blind follows. Two wide outs to the right. Clayton, along with Mitchell. Wolf will keep and Reed close. There's B.J. back for a pass. He cocks his arm. He throws downfield. It's caught down there by Clayton at the midfield stripe. Clayton catches the ball at the midfield stripe, and he's dropped immediately. A beautiful reception by Ralph Clayton and an equally well-thrown pass by B.J. Dickey on third and 11. That's what keeps the maze of blue rolling. With six minutes and 10 seconds remaining here, the ball is at the 50-yard line. 18 yards in from that Michigan bench on the eastern sideline. Oh, Bo, George Patton, Jim Becker, and his troops are aroused right now. The maize and blue pride is a stake here. They were humiliated last year when Michigan State turned the trick 24 to 15. It's the I formation, Wolf Oak deep and Reed close, and there it is, Reed up over the center for about three yards. Webb making the tackle in there for Michigan State. Michigan State's defensive line now averaging about 230 pounds a man. Michigan's front seven averaging 240. Michigan has about a 10 pound per man advantage up front in the trench, whether they're on offense or defense. And that's where ball games are won and lost. We have found that out at Michigan this year with that offensive line. Now those men are back again. Powers and Paris and Becker and Moransky, along with Lilger, the front five, trying to break it out here. Second and eight. Wolfhawk deep and Reed close. There it is, BJ. He's going to pitch off to Wolfhawk around the right side. Wolfhawk over the 45. Dances his way to the 42-yard line. Picking up on the play about five or six yards. Boy, he moved down there. Lendo Wolfhawk looks fresh. He's moving. Sure is, Bob. I don't know. It looks like uh, Stanley's had a work day, as you know. Uh, your statistician, Jack Lane, 24 times that he's carried the ball, and he's gained 137 yards and has been popped, and he's been on the special teams also. Two tight ends for B.J. Dickey. Third and two, a critical one. There is a pitch off to Wolfhawk. He needs two yards. Is he going to get him? He battles his way, and I don't know whether he got him or not. He had to move to the 40-yard line. They're claiming that he stepped out of bounds. If he didn't, he's just about two inches shy. If, they're, if that foot is on the 40-yard line, he made it because the yard marker is at the midfield strike. Boy, those state men are in there battling, and so are the Michigan men, and they're putting the ball. Where are they putting it? They're claiming that it is not a first down. It is a first. They're going to measure here. No, it's just about a short by about two inches. Short by two inches. Fourth and inches, five minutes and eight seconds. What do you do? Turn the ball over or do you go for broke right here? Michigan is going to go for broke. They're not putting the punting team on. George Patton Schembechler is staying on the ground. He's got the tanks out there right now. There's no look, Guapa. There's no kick in this one. They're going for broke. Two tight ends and a balanced line. Wide to the left is Mitchell. It's Wolf off deep. Larry Reed close. B.J. Dickey under center. Listen to the voice of Michigan State football in the background. 70,000 states. 
B.J. needs about six inches. He gives to the fullback, and I think he got it. They're claiming right there at the line. He's digging in there. They're putting the ball down, and it is a first down for Michigan. Probably the most important first down of the first five games of 1979 for Michigan. Five minutes and four seconds remaining between here and a possible step back to Pasadena for the fourth year in a row. This is a critical five minutes in this football game. Michigan State digs in. Up over the ball comes Loja. The line follows. Two wide outs, Clayton along with Mitchell. Wolfhawk deep and Reed close. There's a handoff to Wolfhawk. Wolfhawk is tackled from behind and he's dropped right there at the line of scrimmage at the 40-yard line. Picking up nothing on the play. It'll be second down and the clock continues to wind. Four minutes and 37 seconds. Pat Mitten made the tackle for Michigan State. The suspense, you can cut the tension here with a knife. Four minutes and 29 seconds remaining. Michigan a scant seven points ahead. The Wolverines have it second and 11. The last time, remember, they had a third and 11 and spotted Clayton on a pass to the 50-yard line for the Michigan 28-yard line. And this time, B.J. Dickey has the eye formation. Wide to the left is Carter. Wide to the right is Clayton. He has Wolf up deep and Reed close. It's second and 11. It's a passing situation. He rolls out. He cocks his arm. He throws to Marsh down at the 25. Marsh is hit at the 20. Get on his feet at the 18-yard line. That Marsh brings the Michigan fans. There aren't many of them, but you can hear them in the background. And we aren't excited not one damn bit as Michigan maintains possession here. They have the ball 22 yards in from this, the western sideline, the Michigan State side of the field. Three minutes and 59 seconds remaining. The clock continues to wind. Michigan first and 10 on the 19-yard line. B.J. Dickey clutch pass again with 11 yards to go for the first down. He moved it into the hands of Marsh down to the Michigan State 19. It's Wolfhawk deep and Reed close, and B.J. Dickey pitches off to Wolfhawk. He gets one block. He goes around the end. He's down the 20. He cuts back into the 16-yard line, picking up three yards on the play, trying to pick up more blocks, more running room. Wolfhawk cutting around to the right. Remember, he is the... Fastest high school 100-meter man in the country three years ago. He ran a 10-1-100 meters in the AAUs over in Chicago. He's probably one of the fastest men Michigan's ever had in a maize and blue uniform. Carter and he run those foot races in practice. I'll tell you, it's almost dead even. Up over the ball is Lilja. Wide to the right is Clayton. Wide to the left this time is Mitchell. It's Rosie Smith in at fullback. He's close. There is a handoff to Rosie. Rosie's digging, but he gets to the 15-yard line where it'll be third down and about five. And this could be the most critical field goal attempt in Michigan 1979 football history. It could put Michigan ahead with two minutes and 50 seconds remaining by 10 points. But that's speculation. That's conjecture. You'll for stick to the facts. The facts are Michigan 14, Michigan State 7. Wide to the left goes Carter. Two tight ends in the balance line. The I formation will fall deep in it. Full back is Rosie Smith and B.J. is back. He rolls out to the right. B.J. is throwing the ball down. It's caught at the five, and he goes out of bounds at the five-yard line. And the man who caught it down there was Rosie Smith. He catches the ball for the first down, and Rosie Smith, who had only caught one pass so far this year, good for three yards, catches a nine-yard pass, putting Michigan deep into Spartan territory on the Michigan State six-yard line. Two minutes and 23 seconds remaining. Two minutes and 23 seconds remaining in the fourth period. Michigan 14, Michigan State 7 remain. Tom cool and collected you for you always are impartial, unbiased. You bet you are. Two wide outs, Clayton and Carter. Watch Clayton go in motion. Now they're going to throw to Carter out in the left flat. Watch B. Day roll out. He's going to look for him. He throws it. It's a touchdown. Oh, they set that play up in practice. That was a trick play they set up. Don Naylor and Bo Schembechler, God bless their cotton sick and hearts. They put Clayton in motion from a slot on the left side with Carter. And then when Clayton goes in motion across formation, Carter goes from the slot out into the flat. B.J. rolls out, throws a pass. I told you it's coming, and there it was. And Carter caught it, went into the end zone. And, oh, man, Carter, oh, that freshman from down in Florida, he has just picked up his third pass of 1979. And it is his first touchdown against Michigan State. He'll never forget it. Oh, Tony Jackson kneeling. Brian Virgil will attempt the extra point. He's up and send over him. It's good, Michigan 21, 
Michigan State 7 over this, the very amazing blue old fielding eight shows is smiling down. Michigan wanted Michigan State this afternoon. They needed to have this part, and it looks like they're going to take a piece of Michigan State here, and Michigan's now Ali, Haji, Sheik is ready to kick off, and watch him put that ball into the air. There it is, down and out of bounds. He'll get another chance, but this young man, this walk-on from down in Arlington, Texas, who was born in Ann Arbor, Michigan, 19 years ago, who, when he was one year old, went down to Arlington, Texas, and stayed there for 18 years. He came back up here and looked at Michigan in the summer of 78. He said, I like you, Bo Schumbeckler. And Bo says, I like you, Ali. Come on up here and earn your way into a scholarship. So he came up here this fall, and he's missed a couple of field goals, but he kicked off majestically against Northwestern. His first three here this afternoon were out of the end zone, non-returnable. Now he's got his work cut out for him. And on his left, down below is here, it's Diggs, Thompson, Owens, Tony Leone. And then it'll be Ali ready to boot that ball from 65 yards away from that Michigan State end zone. And then there's Jolly, and then Geargash, Needham, Brayman, Harden, and Bostic. As Ali gets set on the 25-yard line, he approaches the 30, the 35, and he kicks deep. End over end. Oh, my gosh, it's going out of bounds again. He's going to come back. Well, this time he's got to kick it 70 yards into the Michigan State end zone. Even a guy from Texas probably won't be able to do that, Lundo. Well, they can do a lot of things in Texas, Bob, I'll tell you. <laughs> they say they can. We saw that barefooted kicker kicking against us, and he certainly had a great foot. It's the 1969 Michigan-Ohio State game, the greatest upset in the 100-year history of Michigan football. When old boy George Patton Schembecker said he didn't have a chance against those scarlet and gray legions of Dr. Strange Hayes, but they turned those Buckeyes inside out in 13 plays. There it is, end over end, and it looks like a big lot again. We're all leading, and he hangs his head. Maybe we said too much about that, Texan. And now they're going to have the kick from the 25-yard line, and Michigan State's going to have excellent field position no matter where he kicks it. It's almost now, I know, like after the safety where they have a free kick from the 20, only this time he's going to kick it from the 25. It's a free kick, all right. But would you believe the five front men of Michigan State are between the Michigan 35 and the Wolverine 40? Ollie is all set to approach. There it is. It's kicked end over end, and he gets it way back to the nine-yard line. And he takes it. He's flipped, and it's stopped right there. The greatest kickoff in Michigan history from the 25-yard line to the nine. Lundo, Lady, that's 41, that's 25, that's 66-yard kickoff. That's good in any man's football game, college, professional, what have you. Boy, oh boy, Marty Clark could use a kicker like that. 66 yards on the kickoff. And poor Hughes, if it weren't for bad luck on that one, Hughes wouldn't have had any luck at all. He caught the ball and tried to turn around and his foot split. Split back, Bert Vaughn, trailing by 14 points, two minutes and 18 seconds remaining. He's got Bird flanked out wide to the right, Williams to the left, the running backs are Smith and Middleton. They'll block along with a pulling guard. And there he goes, Vaughn's back, throws a pass, it's complete down there to number 91, Bramer, and Bramer's hit at the state 33-yard line. Mark Bramer, an All-American in 78, when Eddie Smith was picking him up and laying him down and throwing those pinpoint passes. Bramer, on his career, has had 93 passes going into this game. He is the leading receiver on the state team with only nine in four games. They just haven't been able to get the ball to that great tight end, that All-American of a year ago. Well, that time he caught his 10th pass of 79, and it gave State respectable position here on their own 33. There's Vaughn back to his own 25. Throws the pass out here. It's caught by Byrne at the midfield strike. He's down over to the Michigan 45-yard line. The clock shows a minute and 49 seconds remaining. And Byrne now is dropped there at the 45-yard line. Michigan paying pass prevent, if you ever saw it. A pass prevent. They're moving the ball out. They're moving the ball out 19 yards from this the western sideline. And the guy who conceived that scoring play, he and Bo Schembechler, Don Nalen's right up here, and he's going to tell you about that play in this whole ball game in just a few minutes. Bert Vaughn sets his team. He has split backs, Middleton and Smith. He's back, cocks his arm, looks for a receiver, can't find it, throws it up in the air, way out of bounds, stops the clock, a minute and 30 seconds between here and Minnesota, and then Illinois, and then Indiana, then Wisconsin, then Purdue in the snake pit, and then bring on those legions 
of not Woody Hayes, but Earl Bruce will be ready on November 17th. And then back to Pasadena for the fourth year in a row. That's the way Uber feels right now. And that's the way 55 men who traveled up here along with a 10-man coaching staff. Michigan State has the ball. They trail 21 to 7. It's second down and 10 on the Michigan 44-yard line. Huge deep tram close. Fake on the draw play. Bert Vaughn throws downfield. And it all may be intercepted. Those are trying desperately with Stu Harris, who intercepted a critical pass midway through this fourth period that stopped Michigan State from moving downfield. He stopped the momentum the state had built up when they were only trailing 14 to 7. It was Stu Harris's interception, along with Harden's interception in the first quarter, along with Mel Owens' recovery of a fumble in the second quarter. All those turnovers, all those great plays by Michigan have led to the maize and blue moving 96 yards to score. A great performance by the offense who has matured and become men here this afternoon. Bert Vaughn hands on the drop play to the tailback, Smitty, and he's hit right there at the 44-yard line. A minute and 17 seconds, a minute and 16 seconds. A minute and 13 seconds. Oh, this is the most beautiful 71 seconds we've ever seen on clock. Not since 1969 has old man Eufer enjoyed a ball game. This is our 343rd game, and we can't remember one that we wanted more. And we've enjoyed any more than we've enjoyed this one. Up over the ball comes Foster. The dying gas for the Jolly Green Giants. The split backs, Hughes and Bird, blocking for Bird Bond. It'll be fourth down and ten. This could be the last play for Michigan State. It's way over the head of the intended receiver, almost intercepted down there by Mike Harden. But that was fourth down, and that's about all she wrote. We have 43 seconds remaining. 43 seconds. Michigan will run out the clock right now. You set up that phone. Get the phone. Ready to go. Michigan brings out the offense now. The clock, both of them show 21 for Michigan, 7 for Michigan State. 43 seconds remaining in this ball game. As Michigan State now realizing that they have not been able to defeat Michigan because the Wolverines wanted this. This is the Revenge Bowl of 1979. Remember two years ago, Remember two years ago when Minnesota did it 16 to zip and the Wolverines came back and they upended Minnesota a year ago. For the seniors of last year at Michigan who can do nothing but sit at home and remember their last game in a Michigan uniform against Michigan State. I'll tell you, it's something when you play against Michigan State and it's the same way for the Spartans. Oh, they loved that victory. They wanted that victory. Michigan has a new tailback in now, Ingram at fullback. There is a quarterback in there, Wangler, and Kane takes the ball from his quarterback, and he rooms around the right side, picks up, what he picks up is a five, seven seconds on the clock, which is all important. The ball is resting. It'll be resting 18 yards in from the eastern sideline. That's the Michigan side of the field. Right in front of old foe George Patton, Schembecker and his fine staff, and those great Wolverine players who rose to the occasion here this afternoon. He's a very fine quarterback and wide receiver coach. And it was those key passes here. The bomb to Clayton. The key pass to Mark. That's all there is. There isn't any more. The big, bow little Darrell confrontation is all over for another year as Michigan wins their Revenge Bowl of 1979. The final score again, Michigan 21, Michigan State 7. Victory has a thousand fathers while defeat is an orphan. And believe you me, that Michigan locker room in just a few moments, they're going to go stark raving bananas. It's a day that 22 Michigan arrogant asses put on the gloves of green. And as Richter played the victors, they picked Darrell Rogers clean. And the final score again here in East Lansing this afternoon, Michigan 21, Michigan State 7. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's the phone ringing right here in the booth. Right here in the booth. Wait a minute. Let me pick up that phone. Hello? Hello? You're kidding. Sure I remember you. You're Sebastian Vitale. You're Dick Vitale's cousin from way down in Brazil, South America. You're calling for Brazil, no kidding. You just saw the game on TV. Sure, it was a great one, wasn't it, Sebastian? Brother, do you sound excited? Hey, suppose you tell our listeners here in the in your own inimitable Portuguese style, just how you and all the football fans down in Brazil feel about this big Michigan win here this afternoon. Rice.